Hello, this is FoodOffensive.com's weekly video broadcast. We have been doing a series of special reports on high fructose corn syrup, and this is part three, and this is um, probably where I'm going to end it here. We might get into a little bit of, of sweeteners next week, but I have a whole another series of special reports planned later on in the year that just go into sweeteners and the various uh, things like the artificial sweeteners and all that, so we might wait until then, but for now, we are going to... Uh, do this third part to this series of special reports on high fructose corn syrup and talk about the health problems associated with it, the health, uh, the negative side effects of, of health-wise. Last week, of course, we looked at the, um, the why and the how it's made, why it's made, how it's made. And this week, we're going to look at the actual studies and the things done concerning the health concerns. Now, there are just more concerns than just uh, humans, but on um, the, econ you know, the, the ecology as a whole. And so I wanted to get into that. And this is the article I referred to last week that I, saw, that, I, that I saw and went over, and I said that we would go over more in this episode, and that's what we're going to start out with right now. Then more later, we're going to get into a study about the a particular health concern and so a lot of controversy around high fructose corn syrup. Now this is um, high fructose corn syrup production uses and public concerns by Kay Parker, Michelle Salas, and Veronica C. Nuosu. And this is uh, from the Department of Biology, College of Science and Technology from North Carolina Central University. This is back in September of 2010. And I read this first part on the last episode, just talking about kind of more specifics of how it's made, uh, how it's been widely used in processed foods, how it's being used more and more because it's its cheapness, its um, solubility, its acidity, so on and so forth. When you look at why they, they do high fructose corn syrup, of course, corn is like this article says here, or this study says, it's the king of crops. There are, there's a lot of it, and we're subsidized to grow it by the government, so we have it. And, of course, my big problem with it, too, is the fact that it's probably genetically modified corn. You know, probably 99% of, of, of a chance of it being genetically modified corn when using it to make high fructose corn syrup. Now, going on in this article, production and uses of high fructose corn syrup it says, in the U.S., four companies control 85% of the $2.6 billion high fructose corn syrup business. Archer Daniels Midland, Cargill, Staley Manufacturing Company, and CPC International. 85% of that industry is owned by four companies. That's America. Uh, it is also used heavily by the dairy industry in yogurt, eggnog, flavored milks, ice cream, and other frozen desserts. That's right. Just next time you go to the store and you're craving that ice cream, if you've made the mistake of going into the grocery store hungry, be careful when you're looking for ice cream because it's in everything. I mean, it is everywhere. And uh, you got to pay a lot. you got to pay a premium. You really do have to pay a premium for ice cream if you want to not have it in there. And it, it, there, it is in there, and it's in mainline grocery stores have it. So it's available. Now, going to the cheapness of of high fructose corn syrup and you know using it going that route of looking at the at a motive for using it and that's the cost it has a relative cheapness this article or review says 32 cents a pound versus 52 cents a pound for sucrose um, so table, table sugar it's 20 cents more per pound um, than that and of course we can make corn sugar here in America because of all the corn we grow we don't have to import the sugar from somewhere else Moving right along in this article, if it will let me hear, it says the role in metabolic syndromes, obesity, diabetes, and other cardiovascular diseases. This really addresses the health issue, and I'm going to look at another study here, as I promised later. Several studies published in the last 10 years present data that suggest a correlation between increased consumption of high fructose corn syrup in the past three decades with increased Incidents of obesity and cardiovascular diseases in the U.S. Now, I, I know that our sugar intake in general has, has gained, but you can't deny the fact that obesity is, is out of control. 
And, you know, you can really correlate that with the introduction of high fructose corn syrup. And we'll look at a test that proves it. Now, looking again later on in this subsection, whereas glucose is absorbed in the upper gast uh, gastrointestinal tract by a sodium glu glucose uh, co-transporter system, fructose is absorbed lower in the intestinal tract by a non-sodium dependent process. And it goes on to talk about a little bit of the biology of it and, and how it's, how it's um, processed in the body and how that can be led to you know type 2 diabetes and uh, moving on here in, in the rest of that subsection talking about the insulin fructose does not influence insulin release thus it in it its ingestion may lead to a low insulin concentration that results in low leptin levels leptin is a, a satiety hormone that curbs appetite Hence, low levels of leptin would be expected to increase food intake. See, that's the other, the other angle here that, that is argued that taking in high fructose corn syrup, you tend to take in more food when you're eating. When you have that soda and that burger and fries, you're going to supersize it, and you're going to drink more high fructose corn syrup. You're going to eat more fries and more burgers and um, causing more problems down the road for that. It goes on, there is no doubt of the need for ongoing studies in this area, not just on high fructose corn syrup, but on other sugars and their contributions to high caloric intake that lead to weight gain, obesity, and associated metabolic syndrome. See, this is kind of a, this is not, this review, I don't believe, is taking really one side. They're trying to really present it well and scientific data and things like that. So here's another issue with the high fructose corn syrup, and that's the fact that it contains mercury. Now, that's a huge problem if, if that's true. It's contaminated with mercury. And it goes on to say, a second concern related to high fructose corn syrup consumption is the presence of trace amounts of mercury in high fructose corn syrup manufactured in the U.S. The caustic soda used in high fructose corn syrup production is typically made at chloralkali plants that use mercury cells. And so, of course, you can look at that. Um, and it goes on to say 9 of the 20 samples had levels that range between 0 0.065 to 0 0.57 of mercury per gram of high fructose corn syrup. So it says that there, there's need to account for mercury from this source in the diet of sensitive populations such as children and others when examining the total exposure to mercury. You know, we think, well... I drink soda all the time. I'm not dead. Well, what about little kids that are drinking it? What about in high levels, you know, high doses in small bodies? You got to think about that too. And just another reason why your kids shouldn't be drinking soda. Going on also in the environmental concerns as well. There's an issue with honeybees. Um, they found in a they found in these in the factories that honeybees clustered and they feed on high fructose corn syrup spills during the loading of the product in the shipping tanks. And since the, the HFCS has become a sucrose alternative, since then this has been a sucrose alternative for honeybees. Well, if you've seen my other videos, the col colony, um, colony collapse disorder, the CCD, it's been on the rise and it's been first observed in 71 and they want to link possibly this feeding of this high fructose corn syrup as one of the possibilities for this uh, colony collapse disorder. And, you know, of course, you got to look at the correlation of, of this when it's introduced and when this is noticed and how it goes from there. It snowballs. Uh, factors, factor, other factors of CCD, the colony collapse disorder of bees, could be the poor nutrition, uh, immune deficiency, overuse or misuse of pesticides, uh, and other beekeeping practices, things like that. We looked at the overuse of pesticides being a problem for um, for bees when you talk about um, overuse of those things. But I wanted to get to that article before we run out of time here, trying to keep these at 10 minutes or less, and that's been successful sometimes and not others. You know, there's a lot to cover. There really is a lot of information. And this is a study. This was in uh, the Prince, from Princeton University. It's called A Sweet Problem. Princeton researchers find that high fructose corn syrup prompts considerably more weight gain. This is really 
a study linking the whole weight gain and obesity issues to high fructose corn syrup, and it does a great job of it. And now continuing this report here on this study before I run out of time, a Princeton University research team has demonstrated that all sweeteners are not equal when it comes to weight gain. Rats with access to high fructose corn syrup gain significantly more, significantly more weight than those with access to table sugar, even when their overall caloric intake was the same. Um, they, were, they basically fed them the same solution, the water solution with high fructose corn syrup in one. And then also high fructose corn, uh, regular sugar in the other one. And so the article goes on to say, these rats aren't just getting fat, they're demonstrating characteristics of obesity, including substantial increases in abdominal fat and circulating triglycerides. And it uh, goes on to say different things. Uh, on average, Americans consume 60 pounds of the sweetener per person every year. And so, um, and then also it ends by saying this research was supported by the U.S. Public Health Service. So it's, a, it's pretty alarming. It's something to look at. If you go to, like I said, sweetsurprise.com, funded by Corn Refiners Association, you got to look, follow the money here. Um, of course you're going to see, of course they're going to say, oh, this isn't true. It's not really contaminated with mercury. It doesn't really cause obesity. You know they're gonna they're gonna say the exact opposite of I mean this is a study from Princeton that they're doing this and so you gotta you gotta look at the facts here you gotta look at the follow the money when you kind of not sure what to believe and that's what I did and I found this article um, I was I was reading Sweet Surprise and they almost had me believing all of it so I had to I had to go back and look um, and really check it out and, and I found this I found this study and so I was glad I found that but you can look at that more yourself if you're watching this on on uh, YouTube you can see that and of course the other article here that I show the high fructose corn syrup uh, review that they did as well around the same time in 2010 about the uses to production the health concerns and those types of things and we'll get into another new series of special reports next week but uh, until then i hope this was informative and uh, i will see you next time this has been foodoffensive.com coming at you from the front lines of our food supply thank you for joining me